Here we're told we have a closed rigid tank and it's initially filled with 0.8 kilograms of water at a particular pressure and volume. So let's just draw a closed rigid tank and it's filled with water here. And that's going to be our system. And we're told there's some heat transfer that occurs between the water and the surroundings. So we'll draw that in as well. And that occurs until the pressure in the water is 35 bar, which is our state two. So let's write down some things. So state one, we're told is 70 bar. So P1, let's write P1 here. And V1 volume. 0 0.001 cubic meters. Now just one thing to note, since the tank is closed and rigid, we're told here, the volume is going to, re the volume and the mass are going to remain constant. So I'll just make a note of that here. So the mass remains constant at 0 0.8 kilograms and the volume remains constant at 0 0.001 cubic meters. So that will mean that the specific volume has to remain constant, right? Because the specific volume is the volume divided by mass. So that's going to be constant between the two. And if we do that calculation, that comes out to be 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters per kilogram. So that's going to be the same for uh, state 1 and state 2. So we'll just write that here, little v1. 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters per kilogram. So now we have two properties here at state 1, the pressure and the specific volume, so that will allow us to find the other properties. So now at state 2, we're told that the pressure in the water is 35 bar absolute, but we also know that the specific volume at 2 will stay the same, so that'll be 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters per kilogram. So that, again, allows us to find the other properties because we have two properties here, so we should be able to find the other properties. So the questions are, is the initial phase of the water compressed liquid, saturated liquid vapor mixture, or super, superheated vapor, just for our answer? Determine the specific internal energy at the initial state. Calculate the specific volume at the final state. Well, we have that one already. We just evaluated that right there. Is the final phase of the water compressed liquid saturated liquid vapor mixture, superheated vapor? What's the final specific internal energy? And determine the work done by the water during the process. Well, we can do F right away pretty easy, easily. Since it's a rigid tank, there was no volume change and there's no paddle or electricity or spring going into this. So the work done by the system here is going to be zero. So that's part F. So we did that one pretty easily. Okay, so let's, uh, let's find the initial phase of the water. So to do that, we're going to just make use of the initial pressure and the initial specific volume. We'll go to the saturated liquid vapor mixture table for water organized by pressure because the 70 bar is a nice, easy number to work with. So let's do that. So we'll go to the saturated liquid vapor mixture table for water organized by pressure. Here we are. You can see it's saturated liquid vapor mixture table, water, pressure. We'll go to 70 bar. 70 bar is right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the specific volume there. So remember our specific volume, let me just write it down, it's 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters per kilogram. So it looks like that specific volume here, so let me write it out, not in scientific notation, be 0 0.00125. So if I look at that specific volume here, it's less than that specific volume, right? So what that means is that the, our state one is more compressed, the, the volume is smaller than the saturated liquid specific volume. So that means that we're dealing with a compressed liquid, okay? So just to kind of uh, convince you of that, if we drew a PV plot, here's our vapor dome. 
This is the 70 bar we're dealing with. That's the spe specific volume for the saturated liquid state. Of course, this is the specific volume for the saturated vapor state. And our, sat our specific volume is somewhere over here. So we're, we're somewhere out in there. So we're in a compressed liquid phase. So let's go back to our problem. So let's see where we are. Okay, so based on this information, we know that we're in a compressed liquid state for state one. Okay, so that takes care of part A. Let's now take a look at part B, determine the specific internal energy of the initial state. So for that, what we're going to do is just make use of the compressed liquid property approximations. So the specific internal energy for a compressed liquid in general is a function of temperature and pressure or two properties in general. We typically use temp uh, temperature and pressure. But we can use an approximation that this, that's equal to the specific internal energy of the saturated liquid state at the same temperature. Okay, so we can do this at the same temperature. So in order to do that, what we're going to need to do then is find the temperature in the of the um, of the system. So we have the pressure and the specific volume. We, we, we know it's a compressed liquid, but we don't know what the, the temperature is. So to do that, I'm going to make use of the specific volume approximation for compressed liquids. So remember that in addition to the specific internal energy approximation, there's one for specific volume for compressed liquid. Again, it's typically a function of temperature and pressure or two properties. But that's also approximately equal to the specific volume of the saturated liquid at the same temperature. So what I'm going to do is I, I know the, the actual specific volume that we're dealing with at state 1 is this 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3. And what I want to do is, so that, that's this specific volume. And what I want to do is see what temperature gives me about that same specific volume for the saturated liquid. So it's, it's like saying this, this is 0 0.0125 cubic meters per kilogram. So I'm going to go back to the saturated liquid vapor mixture table and see what saturated liquid specific volume is about equal to that 0.00125 and then see the temperature corresponding to that. And that will give me the temperature I need. And that, that temperature, at that same temperature, I'll take a look at the specific internal energy and that'll give me the specific internal energy for state one. So let's go back to our table. All right, and what I'm looking for, actually, I'm going to go back. To, I'm going to look at the table organized based on temperature. That's a little bit better for me here. So here's the saturated liquid vapor mixture table for water organized on temperature. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the specific volume table. And what I'm looking for is a specific volume of 0 0.00125. And I want to see roughly where that is on here. So I go through the table. And it's pretty close to right here. Right? It's, it's pretty close to that temperature, right? Almost right there. And so if I, oops, that I just circled the, the pressure. What I'm really, it's the temperature of about 250 degrees C. So I'm going to say that that's close enough. I'm not going to bother linear, linearly interpolating because I'm, I'm, it's pretty close except for those last two significant digits. You could linearly interpolate and get a little more accurate answer, but I'm not going to do that for this example. We'll just say that the temperature is about 250 degrees C. And that, uh, because we know the specific volume and we know the specific volume for a compressed liquid is about equal to the saturated liquid specific volume, which is that number right there. So the 
Corresponding specific internal energy, it's in this column. So that's the specific internal energy for the saturated liquid. And that is the 1080.8. So going, we just need to remember that number. If we go back to our problem, we see that this gives us a temperature of about 200, what do we say, 250 degrees C. And this then means, uh, if we go back up to this one, this one is about, um, the number was 1080. Actually, I did do, just in my, my notes, I actually did do a little linear interpolation. So I got a slightly more accurate answer. I'm not going to show it here, but this is what I end up getting for the specific internal energy for state one. Okay, so this one's a little bit tricky because we're in a compressed liquid state. And then to get the specific internal energy for uh, substance in the compressed liquid state, we made use of this approximation. So we just use the saturated liquid value for the specific internal energy at the same temperature. So this should be like a T1. And we found that temperature using the specific volume for uh, that, that approximation for compressed liquid, found what the temperature was, and then found the specific internal energy at state one from that. Okay, so that's part B. We just did that one. Part C, the specific volume at the final state, well, we already did that one. That, that answer's right here because we know the specific volume remains the same. Now for part D, what's the final phase of the water? So for that, we're gonna just make use of, again, this the saturated liquid vapor mixture table at 35 bar in that specific volume. So let's go back to the table. It's the saturated liquid vapor mixture table for water organized according to pressure. And we said that that, that final pressure was 35 bar. So let's go to the table at 35 bar right there. And then we said that this the specific volume for state two was the same That. So when I look at that, here's the specific volume that we're starting with, uh, 0012, 001235. And then for the saturated vapor state, it's much larger right there. So if I look at this value and that one, this is just a little bit bigger than that. So that means we're in a saturated liquid vapor mixture stage, just barely. We're just barely there because it's just a little bit more than the saturated liquid specific volume value. So, so our state number two, let's go back, sorry for going back and forth so much, but that's just how this is organized. So from the, from the tables, we see that we're in a saturated liquid vapor mixture phase at state two, just barely. Okay, so that takes care of that one. Then we're asked to find the final specific internal energy of the water for state two. Well, since we're in that saturated liquid vapor mixture phase, to find that final specific internal energy, we're going to need to know the quality, right? So just remember that we can find the quality at state two is that we're going to find that quality just based on the specific volume that we know. It'll be the specific volume at state two minus the specific volume for the saturated liquid state at state two divided by the specific volume of the vapor uh, at that's the saturated vapor at state two minus the specific volume of the saturated liquid at state two. So this specific volume is right there. Now we need to find the specific volume for the saturated liquid at state two and the specific volume for the saturated vapor at state two. And that will go back to the table. Again, we're gonna to have to go back and forth a bit here. The saturated uh, liquid specific volume is right here. So the zero, zero, one, two, three, five, zero. 
and the one for vapors right here, the 0 0.057058. We just try to remember those. And then let me just, actually I don't have those written down, so I just need to write them down for a moment. Okay, and then we go back to our problem statement. And we can write these down. So this one was 1, 1.2350 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters per kilogram. And this one was 0 0.057058 cubic meters per kilogram. So then we can plug in the numbers and we'll get that the quality at state 2 comes out to be 2.74 times 10 to the minus 4. So it's a very small quality. It's almost zero, which means it's almost in a saturated liquid state. And that makes sense because our actual specific volume is 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3, and the saturated liquid specific volume is 1.235 times 10 to the minus 3. So we're pretty darn close to being a saturated liquid, so that's why the quality is so small. Now to find the specific internal energy at this state, what we're going to do is just make use of our uh, our mass weighted averaging to, uh, for, from the saturated liquid value and the saturated vapor value. So it looks like this. So what we have here is this is the quality at state 2 times the specific uh, internal energy for the saturated vapor at state 2. And then this is the specific internal energy for the saturated liquid at state 2. So th this is just a mass weighted average. So this is taking the vapor multiplied by what fraction of the mass is actually vapor and then adding to it the, the property value for the saturated liquid multiplied by what fraction of the mass is actually liquid. And then combining those two together gives us the property value. So I need then to find the saturated liquid value for state 2 and the saturated vapor value at state 2. So again, we go back to the tables. Let me just show you to be thorough. So we go back to our tables. Here we are again at 35 bar, which is our pressure for state 2. And here is the specific internal energy for the saturated liquid state and then the specific internal energy over there for the saturated vapor state. Okay, so we can take those values, go back to our problem. Again, we're just going back and forth here. Let me write them here just to be thorough. So this is 145.5 kilojoules per kilogram. This is 2602.9 kilojoules per kilogram. And then we work out the numbers for that and what we'll get. And, and by the way, our quality is given right here. So when we plug in those numbers, the U2 comes out to be about 1045.8 uh, 1, kilojoules per kilogram. One thing I should just point out, when you look up these numbers in the tables, it depends on what table you use. Sometimes they might be a little bit different, and the reason for that is just using different experimental data sets. There are, the numbers should all be pretty close, especially specific volume numbers should be pretty close regardless of what table you use. But the values for the specific internal energy might be a little different depending on the, the reference point that's used to get these values. And again, different data sets will sometimes give different numbers. They shouldn't be too far off but they might be a little different. Okay, so that takes care of part E, and then part F we already did. We just said because it's a rigid tank, the volume is a constant, so that means there's no work being done. So that is part F. All right, so that covers everything in this problem. A few things just to kind of recap. It's important to recognize when it said it was a closed rigid tank that the specific volume is going to remain a constant. That allowed us to determine what's happening at state 2. Remember, you need two properties to nail down the other properties. So at state 1, it was the pressure and specific volume. State 2, it was the pressure and specific volume. 
We use the property tables to determine what kind of phase we were in. And we can, uh, we then defined the other properties for the compressed liquid case. We made use of the compressed liquid approximations. So that was an important step in this. In the saturated liquid vapor mixture case, we calculated the quality and then used that quality to determine like the specific internal energy from that. All right, um, let's see. Let's go ahead and just as a last thing, we weren't asked to do it, but let's just plot out what this looks like on a PV plot. So here's pressure, specific volume. Here's our vapor dome. We're saying that initially we're at 70 bar. So let's just say we're up here. And then we went to 35 bar, which would be down here. And the specific volume remained constant here. And that would be, it was, the, remember the specific volume is initially less than, so this specific volume was less than the corresponding saturated liquid specific volume. So that means we were somewhere here. So our state one was like right there, and then our state two would be right there. So we want something like that for this process. So we went from a compressed liquid to a saturated liquid vapor mixture. And this was our specific volume that we're working with. Okay. And uh, another thing, I guess we weren't asked to find this one either, but if we were asked to, if we needed to find the change in the internal energy of the water, to find that we could use the, um, I'm sorry, if we were trying to find the heat transfer, take that back, if we were trying to find the heat transfer, because we were told there was some heat transfer here, if we wanted to calculate that, we could do the first law. We weren't asked to do this, but I'll just write it down. So the first law applied to that water would look like this. We know the work was zero because we talked about that earlier. That was going to be zero. The change in total energy would be like the change in internal energy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. But there is no change in kinetic energy or change in potential energy. Those are both zero because the the container's not moving around or changing speed and it's not changing elevation or anything like that. And then the change in internal energy would just be like the mass times the change in the specific internal energy. So if you wanted to find the heat transfer, if I simplify all this down, the heat transfer into the container would just be the mass times U2 minus U1. And we calculated already what U2 was. That's right here. U1 is here. Notice that U1 is bigger than U2, so that means this is going to be negative. The mass we were given is 0.8 kilograms. So the Q is actually going to be negative, meaning that there's heat being removed from the container rather than going into it. So it's actually cooling. Uh, the whole process is actually cooling. All right, I think that covers everything that we needed to in this particular problem. So we'll go ahead and end it there.